Hi everyone, this is the much requested TV Paint multiplaying camera tutorial. I'm using TV Paint 11 Pro, though the multiplaying camera is in both the standard and professional version. I'm going to show you how I made these two animations, what important bits of the multiplaying camera do, and how you can set this up for your own project. My sky background, which I'll call Project 1, pans from left to right and has an animation added on a new layer above. Project 2, the background with fields and trees, has again a simple camera move and just pans upwards. I made both of these backgrounds in Photoshop, though you can do this in any program you're comfortable with. As long as you can save it to a file that preserves the layers, like a PSD, or each layer is a PNG with transparency, that will be perfect. For project 1 the canvas was 5000 by 2300 pixels, and project 2 was 3840 by 7560 pixels. Depending on what I need for a particular shot, I usually just double or triple either the width or the height of what my final canvas will be which is usually 1920 by 1080 While you're working on the background, be sure to keep your finished sections on separate layers, as the whole point of this is to create depth in the background. Also, by keeping the layers separate, you can duplicate and rearrange the layout later on if you want to. Once you're happy with your background, you should name your layers, and you can either save your file as a PSD, or each layer in your project as a separate PNG with transparency. A quicker way to do this in Photoshop is to go to File, Scripts, Export Layers to Files, and then set the file destination, file type, and click Run. Opening TV Paint, I made a new canvas of 1920x1080 and 25 frames a second, which I'll call Project 3. I find the easiest way to get these layers into the multiplane camera is to import the PSD into TV Paint and open each of the layers in the library panel. To open it, click the Books icon on the toolbar. To add your images to the library, click the first layer in your project, then go to New Image and Add Current Layer Image, which will copy that layer to the library. I'll do this for each of the layers in my project, so it can take a bit of time if you've got a lot of layers. You'll notice that the images in the library aren't in order, which is why it's a good idea to name your layers before importing them. If I go into Project 3, you'll also notice that the images haven't appeared in this library. This is because each library is independent to the other, but you can transfer them over by copying and pasting the assets. Once that's done, I can now close my other project and the library window in Project 3, as we won't need those anymore. Next, open the FX stack by clicking the rabbit in the hat icon and add a multiplane camera by going to Add FX, Motion, Multiplane Camera. If you click Open Stage, it will bring up this window showing you four different views of your canvas and how the camera is positioned in the space. You can change these views by clicking the drop down menus here, pan around the screens by clicking and dragging this button, zoom in and out using this one and hit the L button here so the move and zoom will only affect a single view rather than all four. The view tab will allow you to control the camera. X will move your camera left and right, Y will move your camera up and down, and Z will move your camera forward and back. You can create a keyframe by clicking these icons here and skip from one keyframe to the next by clicking the arrows beside them. An important part to take note of is the camera's field of view. This doesn't really matter for singular objects, like the clouds in Project 1, but if you have a layer with harsh edges like a sky or a grass layer that doesn't quite reach the edges of the field of view, it can leave gaps, which will show the layers behind it, or a blank space that is very noticeable when you play your animation through. To avoid this, you can scale up the plane or use the X, Y and Z options to move it and fill the gap. The Planes tab is where I'll add in my layers from the library. If I click here and select a new plane, all these new options will appear. Usually I add in the layers of my background from the back to the front, so I'll start off with my sky layer. I go to the source and select image library and click on my sky layer. Now you'll see it's come up on the stage and on the preview. The most important features I use in this panel is Z, which will allow me to move my planes closer to or further away from the camera 
and the size option down here which allows me to scale them up or down so if there's a gap I can fill it in by making the plane bigger or if it's an individual asset like a cloud and I want to make it smaller I can do so. The colour option down here is also really helpful as when you create a new plane TV Paint automatically assigns a colour. This is so you can see it in the stage area. Making sure that all my layers stay in the camera's field of view, that there's no gaps and that it just generally looks nice is the part that takes the longest amount of time. But once it's done, it's really worth it. Now let's actually create some keyframes. So I want my camera move to last for 4 seconds. So in the timeline, I'll make my layer last for 100 frames and move to my first frame. In the view tab, I'll adjust the value of X to move the start position of my camera and then click the keyframe button. Next, I'll move to frame 100, adjust the value of X again to make the camera move to the right and it will automatically make a new keyframe. TV Paint will put in the movement for you and you can play it back if the preview option is checked to see how it looks. Usually I find this movement is a little stiff so what I want next is to tick this box beside speed profile and then click here. This will bring up a small graph where you can adjust the points to change the speed of your camera move. What I like to do is to go to the bin and select the preset second from the bottom which acts like an easy ease and it'll make the movement much softer at the beginning and the end. There's a few other presets that you can test out, or if you make a preset of your own that you like, you can save it for future projects by clicking add to bin. Once that's done and I'm happy with the movement, I go down to the bottom of the FX stack and click apply on current layer, all instances and frames and then apply FX stack and wait for it to render. After that, you can close the FX stack and stage and play through your animation. If there's any changes you want to make or you notice a gap and need to make one of the planes a little bigger, it's easy enough to open the stack again and apply the changes when you're ready. After that, you can animate on top of the layers like I did in project one and export your animation. If you're unsure about a technique or tool in TV Paint, the best way is to create a test that isn't reliant on deadlines, so you're not under any pressure to get it right the first time. Usually you'll find better and quicker ways of doing things if you mess up first, which I do a lot. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or make anything after watching this, leave a comment down below and I would love to check out what you do. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will be back with another video real soon. Bye!